Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to continue our series investigating SR units and in this video we're going to be looking at inductive reactants, capacitive reactants, impedance and power factor, so four SR units that we'll be considering as part of this video. If you haven't already done so then please click the link in the description below because there you'll find the worksheet that relates to this video and indeed this whole series of videos and you'll be able to fill that in as the video goes on so that when you've completed watching the series you've got them all written down on a bit of paper for your future reference so hopefully that will be extremely helpful to you. Now if you're a fairly avid watcher of these videos and if you've watched the entire series and if you can cast your mind all the way back to when we first discussed resistance and the SR units for resistance. You may remember that I was quite pedantic about the way that I defined resistance because it's often just described as the opposition to current flow in an electrical circuit. But in my definition, I changed that a little bit and I made sure that it was recorded as an opposition to current flow in an electrical circuit. So what difference does it make changing just one word in that sentence? Well, hopefully you can spot there that it means that there is more than one type of opposition to current flow in an electrical circuit. And we're going to discuss those different types in this video. Now, we're not going to go into tons and tons of depth uh, of these different kinds of opposition to current flow here uh, because I've actually made a whole series of videos that relates to this. Uh, so you'll kind of study these in more depth further down the line. Remember, we're trying to get these SR units clear in our heads at this time. But just a very brief overview, you may remember in a previous video that I took this conductor and wrapped it into a coil as you can see here and we said that that basically is what an inductor is, just a conductor wrapped into a coil. Now the really critical thing to remember about our first kind of opposition to current flow that is not resistance uh, is that when we connect an AC supply to this, so not a DC supply, an AC supply, when we connect an AC supply to this coil it behaves very differently to how it behaves if you connect a DC supply. And actually what happens is when you connect an AC supply to this, so the current's going one way around the coil and back the other way all the time, it's constantly changing its direction, it creates something inside here called inductive reactance. Now that inductive reactance is one type of opposition to current flow. And it's not based on the material that the coil is made out of, so it's not based on the resistance that this coil has, it's based on the electrical supply that we connect to it. So again, much more depth on this in later videos, I don't want to overload you with information at this stage, uh, but it's just important to bear that in mind at this stage. So inductive reactance is an opposition to current flow that's created by a coil when it's connected to an AC supply. Now the mathematical symbol we use for inductive reactance is a capital X with a capital L in the subscript. So that indicates the X means reactance, which is another type of opposition to current flow. And the capital L in the subscript just tells us that in this case we're talking about reactance that is caused by an inductive load. So that's X with a capital L in the subscript, and that means inductive reactance. Now, because this is a type of opposition to current flow, the SI unit that we use for this is the same as resistance. So we just use ohms. So again, we're going to use ohms as the unit that we measure inductive reactance in because it is still another type of opposition to current flow. And therefore, the unit symbol that we're going to use is the omega symbol. Now, the next type of opposition to current flow that we're going to discuss is based on this. So again, hopefully from a previous video, you may remember that this is a very, very crude, very, very crude capacitor. So it's a very simple device here that can be used to store a little bit of electrical charge. But again, a capacitor behaves very differently depending on the type of electricity that you connect to it. If you connect it to DC, it behaves in a certain way. If you connect it to AC, it behaves in a very, very different way. And again, I've done lots of videos on this. So again, for more depth on that, please see another video in this uh, series. However, this is something that we'll discuss in a lot more depth much further on in your electrical studies. So what we're talking about here is if we connect a capacitor to an AC supply, it generates another kind of opposition to current flow. And this kind of opposition to current flow we refer to as capacitive reactance. So again, it's a type of opposition to current flow indicated by the name reactance. 
However, this time it's caused by a capacitor, so we call it capacitive reactants. So the mathematical symbol that we use, again, hopefully you probably be able to get ahead of me a little bit here and figure out what this is. So again, we use a capital X to indicate that it is reactants, and then we put a capital C in the subscript of the X. So you can see there we've got XC, which stands for capacitive reactants. Once again, this is a type of opposition to current flow. So what do you think we're going to measure this unit in? Yes, of course, again, it is ohms. So therefore we will use ohms as the unit and the unit symbol will be the omega symbol again to represent ohms. Now our third SR unit is impedance. Now impedance is very simply the total opposition to current flow in an AC circuit. You can connect any combination of capacitors, inductors and resistors into a circuit and that will all combine all those different oppositions to current flow, the resistance, the inductive reactants and the capacitive reactants. They will all combine with each other to give a total opposition to current flow. And that total opposition to current flow is what we call impedance. Now again, uh, those of you who are watching very carefully uh, will may have noticed that I just worded that sentence very carefully. I didn't say that we add the different types of opposition to current flow together because it's not that simple. Uh, we actually need to use a little bit of uh, Pythagoras to do that, a little bit of geometry weirdly. Uh, so hopefully you paid attention during your lessons when you were doing Pythagoras and you were wondering when am I ever going to use this in the real world? Well, you're going to use it in your electrical questions, in your electrical exams. Uh, so we need to combine the values of capacitive reactants, inductive reactants and resistance using some Pythagorean theory. Uh, however, again, we don't need to worry about that just now. That's much further down the line and there are videos that you can view that describe that in a lot more detail, but we'll study that a little bit later on. So we've got impedance. Now this is a really, really important unit for electricians because uh, when you uh, get out on site, you might start doing some testing. Uh, and one of the tests that you may do is an earth fault loop impedance test. You may have come across that before. And indeed, if uh, you are familiar with that kind of testing, then you may be able to get a little bit ahead of the game here and figure out what our mathematical symbol will be for this unit. So the mathematical symbol that we use is a capital Z. So capital Z. Z stands for impedance in this case. However, once again, the unit is so nice and simple. It's the total opposition to current flow in an AC circuit and therefore the unit that we're going to use here is the ohm once again. So there we've got the ohm and once again the unit symbol is the omega symbol. So three really important SI units there for electricians. And finally we're going to look now at our uh, last SI unit for this video and that is power factor. Now power factor I've put in with these other SI units because actually um, they are kind of related to each other. So we can find the power factor of a circuit based on its uh, impedance and its uh, resistance, generally speaking. So it is quite an important thing because it's basically a measure of how uh, efficiently a circuit is using electricity. Uh, sometimes this is seen as quite a complicated, quite a daunting subject. Uh, but again, I've done a whole series of videos on AC theory that basically starts right from the beginning of this subject and takes you all the way through to the end and hopefully explains power factor in a way that is fairly simple and easy to understand. That's normally something we start looking at level three, so that's a little bit further down the line that we start worrying about that one, uh, but uh, that's certainly something that will come in useful in your later studies. Now power factor is uh, an interesting one, so the mathematical symbol uh, that we use for this is uh, generally we write PF as you can see here for power factor. Uh, however, sometimes you may also see this written down as cos theta. Now again, that may be something that you kind of vaguely remember uh, from your mathematical studies at school when we were looking at trigonometry and things like that and you were probably thinking, I'll never have to use this, thank goodness that lesson's over. Maybe you left school and tore up your maths books thinking you'll never need to use that again. Well, here we are studying electrical science and uh, trigonometry becomes really important for electricians uh, when we're doing certain calculations. So we will need to understand that in order to pass our exams. But again, that's something for way down the line. There's a series of videos that covers it quite nicely, so we're not gonna to worry too much about that at this stage. One more thing just to note about power factor, and this is quite an important one, 
is that it doesn't have any units, so it doesn't have uh, its own unit that it's named for. However, a really important point is that it will always be a value somewhere between zero and one. So power factor will always have a value between zero and one. So again, some kind of classic exam questions that you may get asked on this subject. You may be asked again to identify uh, the mathematical symbol for any one of these units. So you may be asked to identify what's the uh, mathematical symbol for inductive reactants or capacitive reactants or impedance, uh, and in which case, hopefully you'll be able to recognize those from the video that we've made today. And again, classic question, what are any one of these things measured in? Well, quite an easy one for this video because three out of the four SI units that we've considered all have the same unit, that of ohms. So hopefully that's quite an easy one to remember. So there we go. We've got a completed worksheet now, hopefully. Uh, we've learned all of our um, uh, important SI units that we need uh, in order to pass our exams, which is very, very important but also to take out into our electrical work in the real world and start using and applying them there. So all that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.